In this video, we're going to use matrices to study population dynamics, that is, how populations change over time. Suppose we have some kind of animal population, and we're going to break the population up into three groups. I will represent the immature animals, which are too young for breeding. M is the mature adults, which are, who are fertile. And P is the older adults in a post-fertile period. The population dynamics will be described by a three by three matrix where one of the rows is one of the rows and one of the columns is labeled I for immature group. The second row and second column uh, represents the mature individuals and the third row and third, co third column correspond to the post fertile individuals. So what do the numbers in here mean? In the first row we have the data on what happens with the immatures over the course of a year. 50% of them survive and remain in that group. 20% of them age out into the mature group, and the remainder die. In the mature group over the course of a year, 60% of them survive within that group. 20% of them age out into the older group. What do you suppose the point 0.8 represents? That's new births. On average, for each mature individual, there will be 0 0.8 new offspring born during the year. So that's the reproductive process. In the bottom row with the older group, um, they're post-fertile, so they don't produce any new births. And of course, none of them get younger and join the mature group. 70% of them survive in the older group, and 30% of them die out over the course of the year. So using this population dynamics matrix, we can track uh, what happens to the population over a period of time. Let's suppose, let's, let's do a trial. Let's suppose that uh, we start out with 100 individuals in the immature group, 100 in the mature group, and 100 in the post-fertile group. What happens over the course of the year? 50% of these guys survive, so 50% of 100 gives us 50 from that group that survive to the end of the year. And of the mature group, um, the 100 of mature individuals produce 80 new births during the year, so 50 plus 80 is 130 immatures at the end of the year. Now what do we have in the mature population at the end of the year? 20% of the immatures age into the mature category, so that's 20% of 100, which is 20. And 60% of the ones that are already mature remain in that category. That's 60. 20 plus 60 is 80 matures at the end of the year. In the older category, 20% of the 100 matures age into that group, that's 20, plus the 70 of 70% of the 100, seven, which is 70 of the older group, survive to have 90 in the older group at the end of the year. Whew, a little tedious, isn't it? But nevertheless, we tracked it for a year. Let's, let's grit our teeth and see if we can track it for another year. What's the immature population at the end of two years? Well, we had 130 at the end of the one year. 50% of those survive. That gives us 65 from that group at the end of two years. And from the mature batch, they produce 80% offspring of the, so that's 80% of the 80 we had at the end of the first year would be 64 more immatures. 65 plus 64 is 129 immatures at the end of two years. The matures, let's see. 20% of these 130 is 26 that come from the immature category into the mature category during that second year. And of these 80, 60% of them, which is 48, survive. So 26 plus 48 is 74. And finally, in the older group, 20% of these 80, which is 16, age into the older group. 
and 70% of the 90 that are already there, 63, survive to give us a total of 79. This is tedious. This is a mess, isn't it? Who would, who would want to do things this way? The beauty is we can use matrix arithmetic to avoid this. Here's how we do it. We simply list our initial population in a single row. One row, three columns, immature population, mature, post-fertile, initial population in each category. And we multiply that times our population dynamics matrix. When you do that, you see that we're doing exactly the same arithmetic, but in a much more organized fashion. When we multiply this row times this column, we're doing 50% of the immatures plus 80% of the matures, which is exactly what we did a little bit ago to calculate 130 immatures at the end of the first year. And similarly, first row times second column gives us the mature population and then the post-fertile population. So that's where we are at the end of a year. And an additional nice feature is we can continue and do it again and get where we are at the end of the second year. Take that first year population distribution, multiply it times the population dynamics matrix, and we have our population at the end of two years, 129 immatures, 74 matures, and 79 post-fertile. So to summarize what we have demonstrated, if we think of T as being our population dynamics matrix and P as being our population distribution to start with, by a simple matrix multiplication, P times T, we can get the population distribution after one year. P times T squared would give us the population age distribution after two years. P times T cubed would give us the population age distribution after three years. And you can use this procedure to track the population as, as, as far as you want. If you wanted to know what the population distribution would be after 20 years, just multiply the initial distribution times the uh, population dynamics matrix raised to the 20th power.